So this is the Mr. Alex Tech Magic Letterbox tool. I'm continuing the trend of just naming everything magic for no real reason, but I've started now, so I can't really stop. It's a free tool. As always, it's available for DaVinci Resolve free or studio versions. You need to be on the latest version of DaVinci Resolve, aka 17.2 or higher to use it. It is completely free. You can download it right now from the link in the description below. That will take you to my Buy Me A Coffee page. Any donations are completely voluntary, and if you don't know enter your information, you just put whatever you want in the box and you'll still be able to download it. I highly recommend if you want the whole project to be widescreen, then you do it properly and you set your timeline resolution to be a widescreen aspect ratio rather than using the black bars. But if you want the letterboxing to come in at different points throughout your project, this tool is a really nice, quick, easy way to do it. It was pretty easy beforehand, let's be honest, but I decided to make this little tool just to make life a little bit easier. Now, before we get into it, just want to let you know all of the music in the introduction was from Epidemic Sound. If you want to try Epidemic Sound, there's a link in the description for a 30-day free trial, so maybe give that a click and you can try it out and see what you think. Right, I think that's all out the way, so let's open up DaVinci Resolve. I'll show you how to install it and how to use it. Here we are within DaVinci Resolve. I've already downloaded the file, so I've got the Magic Letterbox DRFX file. We're going to jump straight into Fusion. Doesn't matter what you're doing or what project you're in, just hop into Fusion and then grab your DRFX file and drop it down onto your nodes area here and release. And it'll say, do you wish to install the Magic Letterbox? And then we can just hit install. Now that's worked for me. If it's worked for you, all you need to do then is to restart DaVinci Resolve. If you've got an error or for whatever reason that hasn't worked, as a quick workaround, open the effects library still within Fusion, click on the word templates on the left so that it's highlighted, click on this little icon here, these three little dots, and then go to show folder. This folder will open, and then all we're gonna do is copy our DRFX file manually to this folder instead and then restart DaVinci Resolve and you'll be good to go. So here we are back in DaVinci Resolve and we're currently on the edit tab. Now I highly recommend that you use adjustment clips for this effect rather than applying them directly to the clips on your timeline. Now the easiest way to set this up, open up the effects library, come down to effects, grab an adjustment clip and put that on your timeline like so. Then underneath there, you should now see the magic letterbox tool. So grab that and drop that onto the adjustment clip. Give the adjustment clip a click. Open up the inspector, go to file, give this a name. So I'm just going to call mine letterbox and then drag this letterbox adjustment clip from the timeline into your media pool and then delete this one off your timeline. And now whenever you want to use it, you just grab this letterbox from your media pool, drop it straight on your timeline, and it's ready to go. You can also, of course, drop this letterbox into a power bin. So then whenever you open a new project, you've already got your letterbox tool all ready on an adjustment clip. You can just drop it onto your timeline and it's ready to go. So how does it work? Well, it's actually really simple. If I hit play, you'll see the letterboxing. We'll just animate in like so, and then animate out at the end. Now you can drag this letterbox adjustment clip to wherever you want it and you can lengthen it or shorten it as you need to. So if we make this a bit longer, hit play, it's still going to do the exact same thing. Now if we give it a click, open the inspector, go to effects, there's not many options here but you have got an aspect ratio drop down. So I've added some of the most common widescreen aspect ratios. So we've got the standard 16 by 9 just in case you're working on a project which isn't 16 by 9. We've got the Cinema 1.85, we've got 2 to 1, we've got Cinemascope which is 2.35, now that's the default because it's a pretty common one these days. You've got Ultra Wide 2.39 and Ultra Panavision which is 2.76. All you need to do is to pick the aspect ratio that you want and it will do the animation for you. Underneath there you've got the speed, by default it's going to take 2 seconds for the animation to go from the very beginning to the very end. If you want to speed that up, just drag the speed to the right and that will speed the animation up. Or drag the speed to the left and it will slow the animation down. I found that two seconds seems to work pretty well. Underneath there you've got this custom curve, so you can change the animation if you want to just by messing around with this custom curve. Have a little play with it. If you do anything you don't like with it, just right click and come down to reset or alternatively just click on this little reset up here in the top right hand corner to reset the entire thing. 
If you don't want to use the curves, click on the curve drop down. You've got easing and you've got linear, so you can just choose from there as well. Now it's important just to note that this tool is using these aspect ratios to do this accurately. So if we take 2.35 for example, what's happening is the width is 2.35 times the height. Now that is accurate regardless of your timeline resolution. So if I was to just click on my little icon in the bottom right hand corner to open up my project settings, you can see the resolution is currently at 1080. If I was to change this to 4K and hit save, just move my cursor a little bit and you can see it'll automatically change so that it's still at a 2.35 ratio even though we've changed the timeline resolution. And that will also work if you go for a completely custom resolution like so. You'll still actually be at a 2.35 aspect ratio. And there you go. It's as easy as that. Boom, and there you go, that's that. I think it's cool. It doesn't save you loads of time, but it does make life a little bit easier. So if you did enjoy it, give me a thumbs up. Any thoughts or feedback, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, maybe consider sharing this with a friend if you think they'll enjoy it. That'd be cool, share the love. Make sure everyone that you think would benefit from this gets to see it. And if you are new here, and you enjoyed the video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Cool, thanks for watching. Take it easy, see you next time. See ya.